This video discusses how to approach the identification of the smallest shorebirds in North America. These tiny sandpipers are informally known as peeps from their peeping calls. The three common peeps in North America are least sandpiper, semi-palmated sandpiper, and western sandpiper. Two similar small shorebirds are Baird's and white rump sandpipers. These are shaped a bit differently. Future videos will discuss the identification and separation of these species from each other. This video will discuss shorebird identification in general and how to separate these smaller peeps from their slightly larger cousins. To accurately identify shorebirds, you will have to learn two important feather groups of the wing, the tertials and the scapulars. You will also need to be able to understand the molt progression and aging of these interesting birds, breeding, non-breeding, and juvenile. My goal is to make this easy to understand, simple yet accurate. Before we get into those details, let's look more closely at size and shape and establish the benchmark that defines these tiny birds as peeps. The peeps are small shorebirds. They are half the length of killdeer, bill tip to tail tip. Western, semi-palmated, and least sandpipers are smaller than spotted sandpipers. Baird's and white rump sandpipers are the size of spotted sandpipers. I use spotted sandpipers as measuring sticks to compare with other shorebirds as these are a widespread and common species. If you are wanting to identify peeps, then you already know the spotted sandpiper, and there's likely to be one around. Anything larger than a spotted sandpiper is not a peep. In comparison to peeps, Spotted sandpipers have longer but thicker yellowish legs. Spotted sandpipers are more likely to stand upright with their necks extended. Peeps often appear to crouch and have their heads tucked into their body. Not always, just often. Finding the end of the tail on shorebirds can be a challenge. Spotted sandpipers have short wings. The tail of spotted sandpiper sticks out past the folded wingtips. This is different from the peeps. The wingtips of least, semi-palmated, and western sandpipers reach just to the tail tip. This creates the appearance of a blunt rear end. White-rumped and bared sandpipers have long wings. The wingtips extend well past the tail, giving these a long pointed rear end. The tertials are three feathers of the inner wing that cover up most of the folded primaries and tail on shorebirds. Primaries are black. Tertials often have colorful edges or internal patterns. Undertail coverts are body feathers that reach almost to the end of the very short tail. Always note the tertial feather pattern and how far the primary tips extend beyond the tertials and tail, if at all. This is a very important field mark for separating look-alike species of shorebirds. Let's eliminate some shorebirds that are smaller than killdeer but bigger than peeps. Those shorebirds frantically chasing waves on the sandy beaches are sanderlings. They're larger than peeps. In winter, sanderlings are whiter than peeps. In spring, they might confuse you, though. Sanderlings are usually found on sandy beaches. Peep sandpipers are usually found on mudflats. Usually, not always. When seen together, the size difference is obvious. Here's a bit of trivia for you. Sanderlings don't have hind toes. Perhaps one of the more unappreciated identification challenges is separating those wheeling winter flocks of Dunlin from western sandpipers. Without anything else to compare, judging size is not reliable. After late October, Dunlin are almost always more abundant than western sandpipers in North America. They remain so through March. Dunlin are larger and darker above. The bill of Dunlin is much longer than the head and quite thick. Dunlin often wade belly deep and probe in the shallows. Western sandpipers are more likely to be found at water's edge, just getting their feet wet. The other smaller shorebird that may be confused with peeps is pectoral sandpiper. It is much like a least sandpiper, but much larger. The legs are yellow. The breast is a heavily streaked bib, ending sharply in a white belly. Male pectoral sandpipers are larger than females, but both are much larger than any of the peeps. The scapulars are another set of wing feathers that are very important to note on shorebirds. Scapulars grow at the shoulder and cover a portion of the wing. 
On songbirds, it is often difficult to tell where the back feathers end and the scapulars begin. For instance, black scapulars cover a portion of the red lesser coverts on this red-winged blackbird. On shorebirds, however, there are several rows of scapulars. The scapulars on adults are larger than on juveniles and may cover a considerable portion of the upper wing. The scapulars on juveniles are often highly colored and patterned and important for identification of lookalike species. All peeps and most shorebirds have three distinctive feather plumages. Adults wear their bold breeding plumage in the Arctic in summer. In winter, the adults sport their generally gray, non-breeding plumage. In the fall of their first year, young birds are brightly colored and highly patterned in their juvenile plumage. In the late fall, they molt into a gray, non-breeding plumage similar to adults. The adult plumages don't step instantly from non-breeding to breeding and back. Rather, breeding plumage is gradually attained throughout the spring. Likewise, the breeding plumage tatters and fades from summer through fall and is replaced in patches by the gray non-breeding plumage. It is common in spring and fall to see adult birds showing a combination of breeding and non-breeding feather groups. Even birds of the same age may be at different stages of feather molt. In September, you may see worn and faded adults still showing some breeding colors, other adults already in gray non-breeding plumage, and thousands of bright, crisp juveniles, all of the same species. Now you are ready to start identifying individual shorebirds to species. I'll start working on that video right away. I'll add it here when it is ready. In the meantime, click on this video separating spotted sandpiper from solitary sandpiper.